Yo what's going on guys, so I'm here today we're checking out the best gold farms in World of Warcraft in my opinion. Now these are the best gold farms rated by a combination of three things. Number one is efficiency, aka gold per hour. Number two is safety, how likely are these items to sell at their listed value, and slash or will they sell at all. Number three is sell rate, aka how often do these items sell, and how likely is it that you'll be making a profit as soon as possible. All of these farms will be rated from 1 to 10, where 1 is bad and 10 is good. The gold farms shown in this video are my fi personal favourites, and the most info collected on them are based on my own experience farming them, and watching some YouTubers and streamers like Student Albatross and Want to Buy Gold, and using their info along with my own experience and my own info, and the gold, gold farms in this video will be ranked from worst to best, in my opinion, based on efficiency, safety and sell rate. So whichever one has the best of all three will be the winner. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Number 7 is the Volatile Farm. Now where do you farm this? Uh, you farm for the Volatile Fire in Twilight Highlands, northwest of Thundermar, and for Volatile Water you farm in Twilight Highlands in the river. Now, there's several volatiles you can farm for, but the fire and the water are the most efficient ones and the most farmed ones. So what are you farming for? You're farming for volatile water, fire, life or air. You're killing elementals and water elementals will drop a volatile water. Fire elementals will drop volatile fire. Keep in mind this is cataclysm mobs only. So when it comes to efficiency, only from volatiles you're looking at 10k plus per hour, but you also have a chance at receiving some, ran some tr random transmog pieces that can boost your efficiency, and your efficiency is also based on whether you're farming alone or if you're in a 5-man group. So I'm going to give this a 3 out of 10 efficiency, purely based on the gold per hour, and the fact that most of it takes a long time to sell. So when it comes to safety, this is a 2 out of 10, it's old world material used for crafting certain transmog pieces, leveling professions, crafting certain potions, flasks that can be used for legacy farming. When it comes to cell rate, the cell rate for this is higher than transmog, but that's because it is material, and you usually sell more than just one of them, you usually sell them in a bulk. So it's still an old content material, so I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 sell rate, because you don't sell thousands of this in one day. You usually sell between 1 to 10, maybe up to maximum 100 if you're in a really, really high pop realm. But it's like, it's, you don't sell that many of them, so overall, this farm gets a 2.5 out of 10. Number 6 is the Burning Crusade Transmog Farm. Where do you farm this? You farm this in dungeons, raids, and in the open world. What are you trans what are you farming for? You're farming for transmog. When it comes to efficiency, this gets a 7 out of 10, because you get a lot of gold per hour. The exact amount of gold per hour is going to vary depending on which dungeon you run, and which items sell best on your server. But I'm going to list some of my personal favorites, and their average gold per hour, in a minute. So before we get into my personal favorite dungeons, we're going to go over safety and sell rate. So when it comes to safety, I'm going to give this a 2 out of 10 on the safety scale, because even though TBC Transmog does seem to have the highest sell rate when it comes to legacy transmog, it also has the most competition. By that I mean there are a lot of people farming TBC Transmog and the supply might be higher than the demand. This obviously varies from server to server, so if there isn't a lot of competition, on the TBC transmog market on your server, then by all means go farm it. There's a lot of good looking items to be farmed, but it's just so popular at the moment. When it comes to sell rate, so sell rate when it comes to transmog, I think TBC transmog is the transmog with the highest sell rate, so I'm gonna give this a 4. A 4 out of 10. Especially since you can actually skip Outland and go straight to Northrend. A lot of new players might miss out on a lot of TBC appearances, and just the TBC genre in general, which will also boost the sell rate. Another factor is the EXP boost that came with 8.1.5, and since people level faster, they can skip even more zones and even more quests. And the more quests they skip, the more potential there is for transmog sales. 
So here are a couple of examples of dungeons and their average gold per hour in my experience. Number one is the steam vault. You mostly get materials from this farm. It's good to bring mining because you'll be mining a lot and you get some blue items and a chance of a purple drop as well. But, but mostly you will get weapons like daggers and some jungle hats. I get roughly 12k gold per hour from this dungeon without getting any patterns. And if you get any patterns, then that will boost your gold per hour. The transmog doesn't sell for much, and most of your gold comes from materials from this dungeon. Number two is the under the underbog, sorry. Um, this gives a lot of hats in my experience, the jungle hats and other hats. Make sure you bring mining, as there is a lot of materials to be gained from mining. This farm did give me a bit of uh, a bit more gold than steam vault. I would say maybe 10 to 15k. While Steam Vault gave me 12k, so on a bad run I would get less from this. But on average I got a tiny bit more from the under underbug than I did from the Steam Vault. And that is excluding patterns. If you get any sick patterns on top of this, then that's quite a bit of gold as well. The last dungeon that I usually farm in TBC myself is Hellfire Ramparts. Now from this one you get a lot of random transmog in my opinion, lots of greens, lots of 1 to 5k items might be tough to sell. In transmog items alone, I got roughly 10 to 15k per hour, maybe a tiny bit more, because I seem to remember I got more from this than the underbog. But keep in mind, the items might be difficult to sell. Also, you might get lucky and get a blade of wizardry, or some sick items that might sell for a huge amount, and might even be easy to sell. So, but don't really don't count on that happening, but it could happen. Overall, due to efficiency, safety, and sell rate, this farm is a 3.5 out of 10. Number 5 is the Cataclysm Transmog Farm. Where do you farm this? You farm this in dungeons, raids, and in the open world. What are you farming for? You're farming for transmog. On an, for the efficiency, I give this 8 out of 10. The exact amount of gold per hour is going to vary depending on which dungeon you run and which items sell best on your server, but I'm going to list some of my personal favorites and their average gold per hour in a minute. Before I list my personal favorite dungeons, we're going to go over safety and sell rate. When it comes to safety, I'm going to give this a 2 on the safety scale. The Cataclysm Transmog market is kind of based on people skipping Cataclysm quests and thus also losing out on certain appearances for them to realize later on that they want a certain appearance and instead of going back to the quests to obtain a similar appearance they buy the item on the auction house. When it comes to Celerate I'm going to give it a 2 as well based on the same reasons as stated recently. Most of Cataclysm items will sell to collectors and people who are collecting appearances they don't have. So in order to sell this kind of transmog you you have two things, you have two things that kinda need to align. You're targeting collectors and people who haven't obtained appearance by questing through Cataclysm Zones. Anyone who started playing before Legion most likely has most of the Cataclysm appearances, so your buyers will most likely be collectors who are new to the game. Thankfully Legion and BFA did bring quite a few people in. So with that being said, here are my two favorite dungeons from Cataclysm to farm for gold. Number one is Throne of the Time. This might be the best dungeon from Cataclysm to farm gold in, purely due to the mob density and the levels of the mobs and so on. You have a really huge pool of items that you can gain, that you can get, and one run doesn't take that long. So, through on the ties, you will get a lot of items in the 2 to 10k gold range, and some in the 10 to 50k gold range. It's a very quick lap to do, plus, if you kill the room with the extra optional boss in it, you can fetch some easy loot there as well, due to the mob density. When it comes to gold per hour, I got an average of 60k gold per hour doing, doing this, and that's over the course of 5 hours. I probably could have farmed it even more to get even more accurate results, but when it comes to Cataclysm and the Northrend dungeons, I came to the conclusion that they have a lot of high value items due to the fact that not a lot of people are farming them, and you have the option to skip questing in these zones, so people might lose out on some appearances and they might take long to sell. Basically, it's a lot of gold per hour in actual market value and item value, 
but actually selling the items might be difficult. So another dungeon that I actually farm myself in Cataclysm is the Stone Core. Pick up skinning and skin the flyers, kill everything, loot everything. Some transmog items are actually worth a bit. I usually only keep items worth over 1k and the rest I vend it. Another reason I do this dungeon is because I'm farming for the mount that drops here anyway, so I just farm some gold while also farming for the mount. On an average I got roughly 30k gold per hour in item value from doing this. Overall, due to efficiency, safety and sell rate, this farm gets a 4.5 out of 10. Farm number 4 is Lich King Transmog Farming, or Northrend Dungeon Farming really. Where are you farming this? You can farm this in dungeons, raids and in the open world. What are you farming for? You're farming for transmog. When it comes to efficiency, I'm gonna give this farm a 9.5 out of 10, which is a really high number, but that's that, I'm gonna explain that as we go. The exact amount of gold per hour is gonna vary depending on which dungeon you run and which items sell best on your server, but I'm gonna list some of my personal favorites and their average gold per hour in a minute. Before we list our dungeons, we need to go over to sa the safety and the sell rate of these items. So when it comes to safety, I'm going to give this a 3 on the safety scale, because on most servers, transmog is risky business because you never know when it's going to sell, and let's say you get you farm for an item and you don't sell it before 6 months from now, a lot of other players might have farmed that same item and you might have more competition selling it, which will drive down the price. That being said, Wrath of the Lich King did bring in a whole new type of armor appearance, and by that I mean you can actually see the iron in the iron sets, and basically it was clear which material was used in which set. The visual of armor types became something entirely different and changed the way a lot of appearances looked. That's why a lot of people use either whole sets from the Lich King, or just parts of sets from Lich King Transmog and to incorporate into their own Transmog set. So, rather than Lich King, Transmog should, keyword being should, sell more frequently than, for example, Cataclysm, especially since there is quite a bit of difference between world drops and quest appearances. When it comes to sell rate, because a lot of the world drops are different than dungeon drops and quest drops, a lot of players will not have collected the sellable Lich King Transmog pieces, which means that more players will be looking to buy them. Additionally, a lot of the Transmog pieces look great and not too overdone if you know what I mean, so you can easily incorporate some of the pieces into your own custom Transmog set. Overall, I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 10 on the sale sell rate alone. So let's look at a few of the dungeons that I run when it comes to Lich King Transmog farming. Number one, and probably the best one, is Hall of Stone. This dungeon is absolutely sick for gold per minute, but considering the runs won't take long, you might be looking at some downtime unless you got several characters stationed outside the entrance. So you can do 10 runs on one character, log out, then do 10 runs on a different character, then repeat. This dungeon actually gave me transmog worth of 100k per hour. So why is this? Let's just look at some of the insane items that can drop from this dungeon. First we have the Magnetor set, worth roughly 300,000 gold. Then we have the Jormungar set, worth roughly 30,000 gold. You have the Grino set, worth roughly 40,000 gold. You have the Volvar set, worth roughly 35,000 gold. You have the Heroes set, worth 20k gold. You also got weapons like the Trollish Destroyer, worth 34,000 gold, Troll Decolator with 19,000 gold, Piercing Glaive with 146,000 gold, and the Acute Shortbow with 156,000 gold. You also have lots more items and recipes or patterns that can drop from this dungeon, so you can see there is a lot of items of high value. Now the difficult thing is, even though they are listed to be worth this much, I highly doubt they actually sell for this much. But it is a good indicator, because a lot of people now having the option to skip through the entire Northrend questing phase, people will miss out on the Northrend questing gear. And when they get into the whole styling their character thing, many of them will buy appearances from the auction house instead of going back and questing to obtain appearances. So if you want me to take out and make a whole video explaining this and transport farming in general, let me know in the comments, because for now I'm going to keep this Kinda short and keep going to dungeon number two. Dungeon number two when it comes to Lich King Transmog farming is Gundrak. 
For this dungeon brings skinning and an enchant to make skinning mobs go faster. The leather will increase your gold per hour, so why not just do it? When it comes to transmog, you will get a lot of 1 to 10k items, and they will look somewhat, what do you call it, somewhat normal. They're not spectacular in any way, but like I said, a lot of people haven't collected the appearance. In market value, I made roughly 50k per hour, including transmog and leather. You do of course have a chance at getting some extraordinary items as well, like for example the sword worth 140k and the bow worth 160k. But 50k per hour without extraordinary items is pretty good, but keep in mind the items might take a while to sell. Overall, due to efficiency, safety and sell rate, this farm gets a 5 out of 10. Number 3 is pet farming. Now this is kind of a broad aspect and there are a lot of pets you can farm and the amount of gold per hour you get depends on which farm you, which pet you're farming. But I'm gonna list the top 3 pets to farm in my opinion. Number 1 is the fox kit dropped by the Barad fox in Tol Barad. This can be farmed in a group and it has the hyper spawn effect. Now if you use the hyper spawn you get roughly 1000 fox kills per hour which also means you usually get roughly 1 pet per hour because it has a 0.1% drop chance. This would be 20 to 50k per hour depending on your realm. The price for the pet on an average on the EU, the EU medium price is 4 to 7k gold. These guys can hyper spawn as I just said but, uh, if you, but if you want to do that you need to have roughly 8 people killing foxes in their own spot, not running around, not looting anyone else's spot, just killing your own spot and looting your own kills. Some spots have 4 fox spawns, some have 3, some have 2. If you place one guy at each spawn point, they will force spawn, and you can keep killing the fox that spawn in your spot over and over again. This will give roughly 1000 kills per hour, which should be roughly 1 pet per hour. You can also do it solo by running around and making a macro to target them, but then I would suggest picking up herbalism and mining or skinning to make some extra gold from that since you will kill way less foxes solo than you will in a group. Pet number 2 is the black tabby cat dropped by several mobs in Hillsbrad foothills. The best place to farm this is on the farmland south of East Point Tower in Hillsbrad. The pet has a EU medium price of 77,000 gold and it looks like it has a roughly 1 in 5,000 drop chance. This spot in a 5 man or 2 times 4 man group with hyper spawn effect gives roughly 5,000 kills per hour which, which should, keyword being should, equal to 1 pet per hour giving you a gold per hour of 77,000 according to the EU medium price. But the actual value of the pet on the moist servers is between 20 to 40k gold so I think the more realistic gold per hour from this farm is like 30,000 which is still pretty good. Pet number 3 is the Spriter Darting Hatch, the Sprite Darter Hatchling. This is dropped by mobs in Feralis, and you can farm this in the absolute north entrance to Feralis, where you can kill whelplings and get the emerald whelpling pets, bright daughter pet and transmog, or you can farm it in the Gorduni outpost in the northeast Feralis where you kill ogres. These do have the hyper spawn effect and you should be getting a massive amount of kills per hour, thus increasing your gold per hour potential. Notice that even though this is a battle pet farm, you can also get some pretty expensive transmog items from this. So pet farming, let's rate it by the same stats as the others. Efficiency, I would say 20 to 50,000 gold per hour depending on how creative you are and which pets you farm for, you might even get more than 50k per hour. With creative I mean thinking outside of the box and farming pets that maybe nobody else farms on your server. So on efficiency I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. When it comes to safety I would say the safety of these isn't very high because battle pets are really mostly used for collection. But at the same time, when you're selling transmog, you're limited to one realm. With battle pets, you can sell them anywhere. For example, I play on Terracor Alliance. If I farm a battle pet on that server, on my alliance character, the battle pet is account bound and I can log on to a diff totally different server like Stormscale, make a horde character, log on to that one, cage my pet that I farmed on my, on my alliance character on a different server on my horde character and sell it there. So basically you can farm it anywhere and sell it anywhere. So if I farm 20 sprite daughter hatchlings, I can try to sell them on 20 different servers at the same time. 
thus increasing the chance of them actually selling. So based on that fact, I'm actually going to give the safety of this type of gold farming a 6 out of 10. When it comes to sell rate, I'm going to do the same as above. If you're trying to sell the battle pets across multiple servers, the sell rate will be higher than if you just try to sell them on one. The competition might also be higher, but we're just worrying about sell rate for now. I'm going to give the sell rate a 4 out of 10, because there isn't a lot of people buying battle pets right now. So overall, this method of farming gets a 6 out of 10. So we've been talking a lot about, about old school farming now, like legacy farming, old content farming, whatever you want to call it, but these two are BFA farms. Number two, this is the Dune Scavenger Farm. Where do you farm this? In World Dune, I have several videos on this showing several different locations. My most recent one should show a, a spot that actually works. How do you do this? You do this in a 2 times 4 man group, preferably one monk tank, and the rest being ranged DPS pulling mobs. What are you farming for? You're farming for the Dune Scavenger Mount, 350 plus epic BOEs, and Tide Spray Linen. When it comes to efficiency, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. You get roughly 40,000 gold, 40, gold per hour if the mount drops once every 10 hours, and a regular 350 epic drops once every 3 hours every 3 hours, which is a somewhat reasonable odds. If you're a tailor, you can even secure some extra gold with extra tried spray linen and some deep sea satin. These materials can also be shuffled with a tailoring shuffle into crafting certain items and disenchanting those items for even more profit, which would increase the safety of this farm. When it comes to safety, I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. Since this is a current expansion farm, I would say the safety margin is pretty okay. The items will definitely sell, however the price range varies. The mount can dip from 300k to 100k on one server in a week, and it can also go up from 100k to 300k in a week. Basically the prices vary a lot, and the tides for linen adds an extra safety to this farm, especially if you're a tailor, and even more so if you incorporate the tailoring and chanting shuffle, which I do have a video on, a video about, but that video is a bit outdated, outdated now because of the recent patch adding more items. Basically, you can use Tide Spray Linen to craft green items that can pluck, pluck blue, and disenchant the blue ones and scrap the green ones to get some materials back and to get Expulsum. Use the Expulsum and the Deep Sea Satin you got from the farm to craft Epic Bracers and disenchant or sell those depending on what sells best on your server, the disenchanted material or the Epic Bracers. When it comes to sell rate, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Seeing as this is a, in fact a current expansion farm, the sell rate is currently high. The demand for Tides Red Linen does however vary, but since you can craft bracers from it and sell the enchanting material, the sell rate will still be high. The mount is also one of a kind, and some of the epic drops can be sold for a pretty decent amount due to their appearance. Overall, this farm gets an 8 out of 10. So now it's time to check out the number one farm in my opinion, based on efficiency, safety and sell rate. So, in my opinion, number one farm, BFA Herb Farming. Where are you farming this? Zero God Sound. How do you do this? You run around picking flowers. What are you farming? You're farming for herbs. When it comes to efficiency, you get roughly 40 to 70,000 gold per hour, depending on your RNG with Anchor Weed, server prices, whether you're alone farming it, or if anyone is messing up your routine, etc. 9 out of 10 efficiency. When it comes to safety, I'm going to give this farm a 10 on the safety scale. Herbs are used constantly, it's most used for crafting flasks with alchemy, for raiding purposes or mythic plus, but it's also used by scribes to create EMF cards, but basically it's just like a mill to powder craft EMF cards, so everyone needs herbs all the time, and a lot of other stuff. Herbs are constantly needed and therefore it's very unlikely that you will find it impossible to sell them. They will sell. Sell rate, same reasons as just listed, the sell, the sell rate is very high, it's current content, herbs are needed for flasks, flasks are used in raids and mythic plus, the sell rate will probably be even higher just before the launch of a new raid, as people will stock up on flasks and cauldrons, sell rate of these is 10 out of 10. Overall the Tiro God Sound Herbalism root, Routine route gets a 9 out of 10 and might be the best, most safe way to farm gold in the game right now. Of course, market depends on your server, supply versus demand, and a lot more. So my advice would be to try out some of the, the, these farms yourself and find out which one you like the best, 
and which one you can realistically make the most gold from. So there it is, the 7 most frequent gold farms that I have been doing lately, rated worst to best. When it comes to actual gold per hour, transmog farms would be ideal, but you also have to look at their sell rate and if they even sell at all. I do tran farm transmog sometimes, but it's not something I feel like I can sustain farming 24-7 simply because the sell rate isn't that high on my server and most popular servers already have enough people supplying transmog to the auction house so it's usually more supply versus more supply than demand bfa farms are usually very safe and 40k gold per hour is good if you ask me however i have gotten quite into battle pet farming lately especially the three pets that i listed earlier in this video this is because you can farm so many different pets and you can sell them on different servers, so if you don't care which server you get the gold on, farming and selling battle battle pets might be the best option. This being said, I have made a totally fresh discord based on gold making in World of Warcraft. I'm hoping to fill this up with as many gold makers as possible so we can find new, new ways to make gold together, especially for classic, because I'm really looking to get into gold making in classic, and I'm not sure how to do this yet, but I'm going to look into it and do as much, like, dive into classic as much as possible, find out everything that I can. So anyone who wants to chat about just gold making or World of Warcraft in general, then feel free to join the Discord. I'm hoping we can make this into an active community before classic launches, so we can discuss gold making and really anything WoW related in that Discord, and just have a great time together really. It can also be a great way to find people to play with, whether it is gold farming, dungeons, questing, anything really. So if you're if you're looking for a new World of Warcraft based Discord community, definitely check this server out. Link is in the description. But that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you found a new farm or two. Just try them out, leave some feedback which one you think is the best. And that's it, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.